Hi, this is Dr. Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm in San Jose at the eMetrics Conference, here with Caleb Whitmore, an expert in analytics. And today, I would like us to talk about the importance of configuring tags correctly in Google Analytics. Uh, this is an area of problems for people. Uh, what kinds of problems do you see? Well, if you don't go through the process of determining and planning the JavaScript tags that go into your site for Google Analytics, what will often happen is that you will see incorrect and inaccurate data in your reports. But it's not very obvious. There's, nothing, there's no red warning button or, or uh, light that says there's a problem with your data. One of the common leading indicators if you go to referring sites is you'll see your own website as a top referring site, mm -hmm. which makes no sense. Your own website shouldn't refer traffic to right. yourself. And when you see that, what that indicates is that your JavaScript tags aren't configured appropriately for your website. And the default tags that you, you get when you set up Google Analytics go through the setup process and says, take this JavaScript, put it onto your website. Those are just generic tags, and they're not meant to be just placed on your site oh. if you have anything other than the most basic of websites. So you really need to think about the other kinds of settings that you can add, particularly dealing with subdomains as well as third-party domains such as an external shopping cart or checkout cart okay. that you might use. Any other special situations where the generic tags don't work well? Generic tags won't work well if you uh, need to add any other kinds of customization, say to change the campaign tracking parameters that you might use if you already use campaign tracking parameters for, for a different site. If you're going to set up your own local data collection server to retain and archive a copy of all the tracking data that you collect, which you can do and then process with the Urchin software application from Google. Um, so those are, those are the most common, but the, the key issues pertain to the tags that, that control the, the domain name settings and the cookies particular to Google Analytics. And if you don't nail that, if you don't get that exactly right, uh, the, the data you get can be anywhere from invalid to wildly inaccurate. So some of the tip-offs are if your site shows up as a referring site, any other tip-offs that might give you a clue that there's something wrong? Another common one is you'll go in and you'll look at your conversions, and maybe you're buying some AdWords traffic. And so you see all this traffic from AdWords, but it has a very low or no conversion rate for your, your primary goals for conversion. Uh, yet, if you go look at direct traffic or referring sites, sometimes the conversion will be very high recorded to direct traffic or very high recorded to your own referring site. Those are two other indicators that you have a problem in how the JavaScript tags are configured for the architecture of your site. So if I notice those kinds of things, what should I do? Well, you've got a couple options. Um, one is to go and review the technical documentation. There are some planning tools. I have to read. A little bit of reading. <laughs> Analytics, unlike a common conception, is relatively hard. It's not super easy. Yeah. It takes some time and some thinking and expertise. Yep. So uh, you need to invest some time in learning how to set it up, or you need to get an expert to help you set it up appropriately. Mm -hmm. If you don't set it up correctly, the value you can get really becomes muted and limited to just kind of looking in the rearview mirror, looking at visits and page views. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you get, get it set up properly, you can see a very clear picture of the performance and the value that your advertising provides to you. And I begin to identify where you're wasting money in advertising and marketing and where you're spending money well. Now, you're a, a certified consultant with, for Google. Uh, and a company like yours, for instance, for a small business, could help them set things up correctly and then perhaps advise them on what goals might be useful mm -hmm. and then perhaps hold their hand for a month or two to interpret and then kind of mm -hmm. they're on their own, that kind of setting. I mean, uh, you know, big companies might in, you know, have you for more, but a small company could get that much and mm -hmm. learn an awful lot from you in that kind of process. There's a lot that we can do in, in even just a very short amount of time, even if it's a couple of hours of a quick consultation to just walk you through looking at what's going on with your site and, and giving you tips and pointers and holding your hand and showing, showing you where to start is a mm -hmm. great place to start if you're a small business. We also have some tools we built. Uh, one is called Analytics Health Check, and it's a automated tool that you just go through. It's free to use. You plug in your information, and it will scan your data. It's not scanning your website. It's actually looking at the data inside your Google Analytics and, account. And where's this tool available? Analyticshealthcheck.com. All right. So, so you've told us a little bit about your business, uh, uh, Caleb. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us? I know notice you're an author. Yeah, yeah. We just uh, completed this book, Performance Marketing with Google Analytics. And very excited. I wrote it with two other co-authors, Sebastian Tonkin and Justin Catroni. 
and um, this is a book. What we've tried to do in this book is is cover Google Analytics at a fairly deep level, but in a way that's digestible. So the first section we talk mm -hmm. about just setting the stage and how you should think differently to get the most from web analytics and online marketing. And then we talk about kind of the end-to-end -end nuts and bolts of Google Analytics, and then provide a chapter specific to each area of discipline. So you don't have to read the whole book. Let's okay. say if you're going to be a search optimization, and that's your job is to do organic search optimization, you could read the first section and the chapter on SEO. And you can get well, thanks so much, Caleb. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. Thank you.